Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about inflation. The CPI is the primary way we measure inflation and we're also going to talk about the cost of inflation as well. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics AP exam. Let's get into the content. Now the first thing we're going to do is talk about a few different definitions. The first definition you need to know is the definition of inflation. Inflation is a general increase in average prices throughout an entire economy. We're talking about average prices of lots of goods and services, not the average price of one particular good or service. And since prices generally increase over time, inflation is what we're going to see most often in the real world economy. Of course, sometimes prices decrease as well, and when that happens, we call that deflation. That's a decrease in average Average prices for goods and services throughout an economy. You could also see the term disinflation. That occurs when there is a high level of inflation, say 8%, and then the rate of inflation decreases to let's say 5%. Prices are still increasing, but they're increasing at a slower rate. And when it comes to understanding inflation, it's all about understanding the difference between nominal values and real values. Nominal variables are values that have not been adjusted for inflation. They tend to go up over time way faster than if we had adjusted for inflation. But in economics, real values are more important. Real variables have been adjusted for inflation. And so of course that tells us that the difference between real values and nominal values is inflation. And so adjusting between nominal values and real values is all about deleting the price changes caused by inflation. When it comes to measuring inflation, the CPI or the Consumer Price Index is the primary way that we measure inflation. The CPI tracks price changes in a market basket of goods and services. In the United States, that market basket is comprised of over 80,000 different goods that a typical urban household purchases. Urban household meaning people living in, and near cities. In order to help us understand how to calculate a CPI, we're going to have a market basket that is comprised of just three items, a gallon of milk, a chicken, and a pair of shoes. And here we have different prices for those items in 2012 and 2020. Now, just like the real market basket, this market basket is weighted, meaning that some items are more heavily counted than other items, and they are more heavily counted by the quantity that we see within the market basket. When it comes to calculating the CPI, we're going to calculate the value of that entire market basket twice because the formula for a consumer price index is the value of the market basket in the current year divided by the value of the market basket for the base year times 100. So we're going to take a look at all of those prices and all of those quantities. First thing we're going to do is calculate the CPI for 2012 using the market basket we have here. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the value of the market basket in the current year. So for 2012, we're going to use 2012's prices. That's the 10 gallons of milk times the $3 those cost, the eight chickens times the $5, and the two pairs of shoes times the $25. That gives us $120 for the market basket value in 2012 for those quantities and those prices. And then we're going to calculate the value of that market basket using base year prices. Since the year we are focusing on is the same year as the base year, the value is going to be the same. So the market basket value in the base year is also $120. So that's going to be our denominator here. And then times that by 100, that gives us a consumer price index of 100 for the year 2012. And that's because the base year's CPI is always going to be 100. And that's because the value of the market basket in the current year will be the same value as the market basket in the base year. Next, we're going to calculate the value of the CPI for 2022 for this market basket. So for the current year prices in the market basket, we're going to use the same quantities but this time with the 2022 prices of $5 for a gallon of milk, $6 for a chicken, and $26 for that pair of shoes. 10 times five, eight times six, and two times 26 added together gives us $150 for the market basket in 2022. And for the market basket value in the base year, we have the same quantities and the base year prices. It's the same value we already calculated, and that was $120. Take the $150 divided by the $120 times 100, that gives us a CPI of 125 for 2022. Now on your AP macroeconomics exam, you could be asked to calculate the inflation rate between two years. If they give you two different CPIs, here's the formula for you. You take the new CPI minus the old CPI divided by the old CPI, 
than times 100. And that will give you the amount of inflation between those two years. So if in 1997, we had a CPI of 160, and then two years later in 1999, we had a CPI of 176, how much inflation was there between those two years? Well, you're going to take the new CPI of 176 minus the old CPI of 160, divided by that 160 times 100, and that gives us 10% inflation over those two years between 1997 and 1999. Now the CPI is an attempt to capture the impact on average households when prices increase, but it does have some problems and it's not perfect. And those problems can cause the inflation rate to either overestimate or underestimate the true impact of price increases on average households. One of those problems is the substitution bias. When prices go up, we had the substitution effect that you may have learned about in microeconomics. When the price of one thing increases, consumers tend to buy other things instead. So for example, when I go to the store to buy some carrots and I see that the price has gone up, I might buy cucumbers instead if the price of cucumbers hasn't increased. Next, we have the quality change bias. And that tells us that changes in quality for products are not always reflected in the CPI. Televisions have dramatically changed over my lifetime, and those quality changes may not be fully reflected in the consumer price index. And lastly, we have the new products bias. New products may be introduced into the market, but it will take some time for them to show up in the market basket that tracks our inflation rate. So when cellular phones came out, they were not immediately included in the CPI market basket, even though they were part of typical consumer purchases. So why do we care? Why does it matter that prices are going up? Well, inflation has some real costs in our society. The first big impact is the impact on real wages. When we have inflation, the real value or the purchasing power of wages decreases and sometimes wages aren't increasing nearly as fast. Let's say I get a nominal increase in my wage of 5% but we have a 7% inflation rate as a result. In order to find out the impact on my real wages, we're going to have to subtract that inflation rate. So the 5% nominal increase in my wages minus the 7% inflation rate, that means that the approximate impact on my real wages is actually a 2% decrease. And so the real impact of the nominal wage increasing slower than prices means in this example, I'm actually 2% worse off. And that's what inflation does. It changes the purchasing power of our money. Purchasing power is the ability of your money to buy goods and services. And inflation decreases the purchasing power of your money. In other words, it decreases the real value of that money. Now, inflation isn't bad for everyone. Some people are actually helped by inflation. In fact, unexpected inflation actually helps borrowers, and that's because they're going to pay back fewer real dollars. And that means that unexpected inflation is going to hurt lenders or banks, and that's because they're going to be paid back fewer real dollars. You can learn more about the impact of the inflation rate on borrowers and lenders when you learn about the Fisher formula in a future unit. And that unexpected inflation is also going to hurt savers because they have set aside money and as time goes on, their savings will be worth fewer real dollars. And that's because those dollars have less purchasing power and buy fewer goods and services. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know about the CPI and the costs of inflation. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics and macroeconomics AP exam. That's all for now. I'll see you all next time.